Hi, my name's Fern Deacon and I play Georgina Winthorpe in Disney's Black Beauty. I'm really excited to be here today because I am reading one of the finalist stories in the middle school category for the Wild Beauty Foundation's second creative writing contest. I'm really excited. Um, the theme is connection and wild horses. This is called The Unbreakable Bond, written by Tegan D, nine years old from Burns, Wyoming. Let's get reading. The Unbreakable Bond. My name is Lucena, which means born at daybreak. I was born as the sun came up on a spring morning in 1853. I am a buckskin whose coat sparkles like the sun and with mane as black as midnight. I love living here on the plains. The Unbreakable Bond by Tegan D. My name is Lucena, which means born at daybreak. I was born as the sun came up on a spring morning in 1853. I am a buckskin whose coat sparkles like the sun with mane as black as midnight. I love living here on the plains. Late at night, when I went for a stroll near the canyon, I saw a couple of horses. As I got closer, I noticed they had two-legged creatures called cowboys on their backs. Suddenly something whizzed by my head. A rope almost caught me around my neck. I ducked and dodged, but eventually they caught me. I fought until I was exhausted. They led me to their home. I was scared, but as exhausted as I was, I fell fitfully to sleep. I feel the sun warming my back and I open my eyes. Where in the world was I? I could see a mysterious circle of logs laying on top of each other surrounding me. I began running frantic circles searching for an opening. As I was running, I saw one of the cowboys. He opened part of this mysterious circle and shut the circle behind him. He startled me and I spun to get away. But I felt the rope slide over my head. I was captured again. He tied me to a strong standing log that humans called a post. I pulled and pulled, however I couldn't get away. I decided it wasn't worth the strain. I dropped my head knowing that I was defeated. Then the cowboy came toward me. What did he want? I pulled back again. He tried to calm me but I kept pulling. He came to me and let me free. I could finally run again. Then he went to the other side of the pen and sat on the ground. I started to take curious steps towards him. He kept his back to me. As soon as I got to him, I sniffed him and he smelt like grass. I nibbled his hair and I rested my head on his shoulder. He didn't move. He slowly rotated around and looked me in the eye. He reached gently to touch my soft muscle. As soon as he did, he broke the moment of peace. I ran quickly away. He filled a water trough, full of water. He filled a tub with dry grain. I sniffed it and it smelt okay. So I took a little nibble. It tasted so good. I didn't notice how hungry I was until I started eating. Every day the man came back. He brought me the grain, which I learnt was called oats, and filled my water. Sometimes he would bring dry grass called hay. I wasn't as afraid anymore. The man was very nice to me at all times. I was learning to trust him, but all I wanted to do was get back to the herd. I ate what he put in front of me, but I longed for the grass on the open plains. Once I'd been there for about six months, I learned humans weren't so bad. I let the man catch me and lead me with the rope. I love this whole praise and reward deal. It helps me know what I did right, or what I did wrong. I'm learning to like living here. I still miss my home, but not as much anymore. 
One day, when William was working me, I saw a cougar lurking in the bushes. I don't think that William even noticed the cougar. That made me nervous. I didn't want anyone to get hurt, especially not William. The cougar was coming closer. I knew what I had to do. I had to protect William, even if it killed me. He had protected me through thick and thin, so I had to do the same for him. I reared and ran for the cougar. Then I reared and struck towards the cougar, hitting him in the forehead. After many strikes, I had him on the ground. But as soon as I let my hooves off him, he sprang up and tried to get on my back. I whirled away and he flew off. I lost sight of him. I heard a hissing noise, I looked up. and He was in the tree above me. Then William appeared and sat beside me. He had his gun and he pointed it at the cougar. He fired and it missed. The cougar jumped out of the tree and fled into the woods. <laughs> William walked me back by my tattered lead rope. And I limped behind him because I had been scraped up quite badly. The whole time he was stroking me and talking to me. William soaked up the blood with some of the cotton from his vet kit. He also applied the soothing ointments to my wounds. He used what was left of the cotton to pad the bandage on my right forefoot. I stood as still as the tree I was leaning against to keep my balance while he was doing this because I knew he was trying to help. He then gave me the water and some carrots. Good girl, Asena, said William as he patted me on the neck. I nickered in response. I've never had a horse as good as you. You protected me with your life when you could have run away, said William. I gimped along behind William's horse on the way back to my home. I was grateful to see the coral on William's homestead. I, Lucena the Mustang and William the Cowboy became the best friends and the greatest partners ever. William would turn me loose at night and I would go see my family, but I was always waiting for him in the coral the next morning. I was his horse and this was my home. We shared the unbreakable bond. Thank you for using your creativity to help protect wild horses, Tegan. I'm Fern Deacon and I stand with wild horses. Thank you for listening. Thank you.